Yeah. Good afternoon, guys. So we'll start the third session of uh, uh, material joining laboratory. We would also start recording here so that we can use uh, both. So today we are going to see some interesting uh, experiments in a gas metal arc welding. Okay, so gas metal arc welding, uh, it's a consumable welding process. Last week we saw a gas tungsten arc welding process where the tungsten electrode what we use is non-consumable, isn't it? It is actually stationary. That means that it is not getting molten. Whereas in here, in gas metal arc welding, we use electrode which is actually consumable, which, which actually used to strike an arc, but it also melts and transfer the droplets, molten droplets, to the molten core. Okay, so that's why it's called gas metal arc welding, in which the metal denotes the actual uh, well metal we are going to create would come from the consumable what we use. So it's classified under consumable welding process. In a gas metal arc welding, we use uh, a welding consumable, which is a bare wire. What is a bare wire? It doesn't have any coating. Okay, there are other types of consumable processes, such as the first one we saw, manual metal arc welding. Okay, there we use the metal rod and we apply a flex on top. Isn't it? Right? Similarly, flex code arc welding. So it uses different type of consumable where the flux is actually packed inside the metal tube. Okay, anyway, uh, we'll also try to see uh, in later classes that. So in this class, gas metal arc welding denotes we use a bare wire, just wire without any flux coating. We use that as a consumable. Okay? To strike an arc, of course, we also need to use a shielding gas. Okay, so in gas metal arc welding, the shielding gases you know, we can choose based on the applications. The most common shielding gases uh, are argon, helium, carbon dioxide. Okay, sometimes we also mix some gases with argon, like for example, argon can be mixed with carbon dioxide or argon can be mixed with oxygen or oxy argon can also be mixed with uh, a combination of hydrogen and oxygen to achieve uh, uh, various properties in the bell metals including microstructure control, depth of penetration, so on and so forth. Okay, today, in this in our lab, today's lab, so we are going to use argon primarily as shielding gas and we are going to look at five interesting experiments. And these experiments would tell you the role of current voltage waveforms which we use in gas metal arc welding. Okay, so um, again, so the welding, in the typical uh, fusion welding process, where arc is used as a heat source, okay, and the arc energy is dictated by the current voltage, okay, and welding speed what we use, isn't it? The arc energy is primarily controlled by the waveforms, uh, the current voltage waveforms we use. Okay, most of you must have studied in the welding processes course. If not, look at my YouTube videos uh, from NPTA, okay, so it will be clear. Uh, the current we use, it is the set value. I mean, we give as an input. And always, all the arc welding processes, current is the variable, it is given by the user. So, current we can set, and then voltage gets evolved. The system determines the voltage, okay, by changing the arc length. Okay, so it's very, you can't set voltage. Okay, voltage is a, a derived parameter in, in arc building process. So for a given current set by the uh, welder, and the welder can also set okay, how fast the consumable is fed. So that we denote by wire feed rate. So we can also set that, and these two can dictate the arc length. Okay. So in this exercise, uh, today's session in, in a gas metal arc welding, so we are going to see the role of current, main in one of the important parameters. Suppose if you use a simple direct current, constant over time, as one set value. If you use that, how does the welding process evolve? 
okay what will you get out of it right and then in the second experiment we would apply a pulsing current so what is a pulsing current again we can use the same average current using a pulsed waveform also okay so current will be pulsed with very high frequency right and then they we will compare suppose if you use an a constant current of 120 amps i'm just giving value technician will tell you okay the technician will tell you what uh, we would be uh, setting so uh, an identical mean current okay we'll also use a pulsing current wave form and then see how the the well bd is actually developing okay and uh, in a gas metal arc welding process the molten droplet from the tip of the electrode is transferred in various ways okay again the transfer is determined by the current we use primarily right at lower currents we have a globular transfer so when the current is increased the globular transfer can be changed to spray transfer or to gain some advantages in terms of controlling heat input we can also transfer the molten droplet by dipping the wire onto the pole okay so those transfers are known as dip transfer okay so there are some processes which make use of dip transfer so when the molten droplet can be dipped onto the pole so that the surface tension of the molten pole can cool the droplet okay so one such process is cold metal transfer cmt so that's a variant in gas metal arc welding so where we primarily use dip transfer so in the third exercise today we will also demonstrate what is that process the cmt process why is it different compared to the other two processes we looked like you know with a constant current okay constant current means the current is kept in same amplitude okay and then the pulsing transfer in both first two exercise the droplet will be falling down in a free flight manner okay droplet will be coming just falling down whereas in third process in cmt we will be transferring droplet by dipping the wire molten tip of the wire into the molten pool and then the droplet can get attached by surface tension and then the fourth exercise we will combine dip transfer with free flight okay so by carefully controlling the wave forms the dip transfer will also be mixed with free flight transfer so both short circuiting and the pulsing so both we would do it together and then see how that is actually changing the the well geometry uh, well heat input so when we do these four uh, uh, wave form uh, uh, control processes we would also record the temperatures of the heat affected zone so our tas would tell you how to record the temperature in and, sorry in and around the molten pool by attaching thermocouples so we have already plates ready kept it there okay so you can also look at how we use the data acquisition system uh, to record the temperatures of heat affected zone for example right and then uh, look at the typical heating and cooling rates that are encountered and we will use this recording the temperature time cycle what we record later for physical simulation using cleaver and then i had told about the metal transfer isn't it one case it's free flight another case is dip transfer how do we see that how do we visualize so in order to show you we also okay installed we have installed a high speed camera the uh, specialized camera which can record okay metal transfer with the frames ranging from uh, 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 5000 to 200000 2 lakh so we'll be recording the metal transfer the arc how the droplet is transferred by uh, the high speed camera with the frames uh, per second of ranging from 8000 to 10000 frames per second so you can clearly see say what happens when you say free flight how the droplets are dropping down from the wire when you say dip transfer in cmt how does that work and we will also demonstrate that as well so in the nutshell today's in today's class we will be carrying out four depositions four welding 
one is with an adjustment arc with 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 a constant current the constant current is not the current we set no in uh, like in a gas function arc building the current dc current but supply so it will be the same amplitude okay so we maintain that and then the second is we will be using a pulsing waveform pulsing current third is a waveform controlled process to enable dip transfer that is what one as cmt okay and the fourth is combination of cmt in the short circuiting and pulsing cmt plus pulse okay while doing this exercise uh, we will also measure the temperatures and then show you how the thermal cycle in a heat affected zone evolve when you do welding and then now we will also look at uh, using high speed video high speed camera the metal transfer okay so this gives a summary of today's class any questions guys so far okay any doubts in the last class so if not uh, we'll continue we'll look at the lab okay so let me wear the mask and then go there So you can uh, follow Jack Purvey's video. Okay, so make Jack, Jack Purvey's uh, video as uh, like you know, bring it to stage. There is an option in uh, in WebEx. Okay, so the live videos are shown uh, in uh, Jack Purvey's uh, video. So you can turn that on. Okay. Uh, so this is a system for gas metal arc weld. I can come over here. It starts from the uh, So we have uh, the power source. So this is uh, a Fronius make. Okay, if you look at it here, it's a Fronius. It's, it's a, a famous uh, company in Austria. And this power source, uh, no, it can generate waveforms that are required for um, any type of gas metal arc welding. Okay, so it can it can give us a set amperage of current through the welding process, or it can also give a pulsing waveform in that kind of DC pulsing. Okay. And it can also give alternating current as well, but you won't be using alternating current. Okay, and then uh, you can also give a controlled waveform required for dip transfer. Dip transfer, when you do, the waveforms are controlled so closely such that the transfer is stable. Okay, if a waveform is not controlled, what happens when the current is very high, when the dipping takes place, the Lorentz force at the contact is tremendously high. It just explode. So in order to prevent the explosion of the droplet to be transferred, right? So we keep the current bare minimum. Then the voltage becomes zero when it starts shooting at Okay, so we'll all see that you know in, in, in our life. So what you see over here is uh, inside. So this is a spool. Okay, so where wire is actually kept in the spool. You can show this side. Okay, so you see this. Uh, this is a uh, simple mild steel wire. Okay, you see that's pool, and it's a copper coated uh, mild steel wire. Yeah, so the wire from spool continuously fed through this umbilical and goes to the touch. Okay, so uh, Mr. Rajesh, our technician, will explain about the, the process uh, components in detail. And uh, this is a base plate and we have attached to a thermocouple and thermocouple will give us the actual temperature uh, in the heat of the zone, one temperature we will measure using a K-type thermocouple, using a data acquisition system and they, we will also look at using the high speed video, okay, so this is an high speed camera, we will look at the arc, okay, when the metal transfer takes place in various waveforms. And we will clearly see how, say, for example, free play transfer takes place or pulsing transfer takes place, or in CMT, how does the material, how, how, how does the transfer in the take, is taking place in the transfer. Okay, good. Rajesh, over to you. Any questions, guys? Good 
आफ्टरनून एवरीवन सो ऑलरेडी सर हैज एक्सप्लेन इन एवरीथिंग सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द टॉर्च सेटअप सो व्हाट वी हैव हियर दिस इज अ पुश पुल मोटर टॉर्च सो व्हाट व्हाट इट विल हैपन ड्यूरिंग वेल्डिंग the torch will retract the wire when short circuit is generated detected uh, from the welding machine it sends it sends a feedback from the torch to this machine so during that time what will happen the wire will retract when short circuit is generated the wire will retracted automatically okay due to that retraction there the metal transfer will be happen over there so this is the motor we have a small motor we have here and then uh, there is one more wire buffer unit is there there the excess wire will be retracted with the help of that buffer okay this is what the torch setup so with this liner itself all the gases current everything will be transferred to this liners liners and the uh, welding wire yeah so now what we are going to see we are going to weld the in a standard mode which means the regular gmaw process so we we have various uh, programs here the preset program is there as well what kind of mode we are going to weld it it is mentioned here a standard cmt and the cmt pulse the cmt plus synergic pulses the synergic line is there okay now we are going to do a standard mode which means that is normal regular g uh, g mw pulse so what so already the voltage was set over there preset voltage during welding uh, the ampere will be visible over there in the machine yeah hi everyone uh, so rajesh has already told about what are the experiments we are going to do now. first uh, we are going to use gmw standard mode in the standard mode uh, we are going to set only the voltage we are let set the voltage and uh, with that experiment we are going to measure current voltage and temperature so we are using this part that 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 is a general measurement system which is used to measure temperature voltage current strain etc here we are going to use to measure only current voltage and temperature so jag is showing the software uh, the outline okay so here we are going to measure only the voltage current and temperature so we are using the sampling rate around 300 hertz that is for per second how many data will be recorded and here we can visualize real time visualization is also possible during the experiment we can you will get them. okay we are going to start the experiment generator yeah. let's see the beat what we are going to get so 
So this is actually done in a standard 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 waveform. So current is actually constant. Okay, so we have recorded uh, the actual uh, time temperature. I think uh, so. It is recording now. Yeah. So we can see what is the maximum current and maximum voltage. Okay. The maximum voltage is, it is around 26. Current is around uh, 340 something. So. Yeah, prefer damp period. Right? Right. Temperature is recording. So once it is done, we'll know. Okay, guys. So what you have done here? So first, the we have deposited. You see that the bead characteristics, the wire, the consumer wire is molten, right? And then we are getting a nice bead deposited here by the consumer arm. Yeah? Good. Yeah. So this is the first uh, process we have seen. The second uh, demonstration, instead of using a uh, constant, uh, you know, uh, like continuous current, we are going to do a pulsing current. So where the, the current will be pulsed continuously uh, with the set frequency. Uh, it won't change the polarity, it won't fix the polarity. It will be only positive direct current, but it will be okay, pulsed with a defined uh, say IP, the pulsing current, the background current, IB, right, and then the pulsing time, TP and TB. And you must be wondering here what are these wires, you know, here. Okay, so this one, it's the 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 connect, connection point. We use it for voltage measurement. Okay, so the voltage has to be measured from the close to the arcing region. Okay, so top of the arc and bottom of the arc. The one lead coming from here, the other lead is somewhere over here. Okay, so it's over here. So we measure the voltage. And the current is measured using an all effect sensor. Okay, so where is the all effect sensor? Okay, so the all effect sensor is over here. Okay, so this is so this all effect sensor. So using these two, we can measure the current voltage waveforms. Okay, with uh, you know an extremely high frequency. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I'm changing uh, in GMW standard mode plus pulse. So here we have the option, it is uh, CMT pulse and CMT. Now the mode is in standard, which means uh, the regular GMW process. Additionally, we are introducing pulse. It's a regular GMW pulse process. So the previous weld, uh, I think uh, you have seen that lot of spatter has generated in the regular C, uh, gas metal arc welding process. Now additionally we are introducing pulse in this thing, the same program. So now we are going to deposit in uh, pulsing mode.
so this time you can see the bead difference previously uh, the bead was very thin and narrow you can see the bead uh, width you can see the width of the bead and then the spatter is reduced at right now so this is our uh, previous well bead you can see the difference so the beam current is similar so the i mean of pulsing wave form similar to what we used in the past where we have a uh, uh, constant amplitude of this beam so you see the bead difference already in the second in the pulsing case the bead is wider so that means that the arc energy that goes in is slightly different than slightly higher than what we used in the past Yeah. Any questions so far, guys? Hello. Are you there? now we change the mode from standard to cmt okay so the mode is right now in cmt and then uh, here also we have to choose which program we are we are going to be welded the program is steel er70s okay i have chose that program so the amperage here it is 100 amps and then voltage both it will be visible during the weld time it will varies So you can see the bead right now. Uh, the bead is not a proper. It's not a proper bead. Why? Because uh, our current is not sufficient for this much thickness. The thickness of the plate is six mm here. Always in CMT, we will have very low current. Okay, the heat input will be very minimum here. This hundred is not sufficient. One more bead, I try to lay on the adjacent of that bead. you can see the difference
प्रकाश कैन यू एडजस्ट द करंट ओवर दे जस्ट इंक्रीज इट या जस्ट जस्ट अ मिनट प्रीवियसली वी सेट 100 राइट यू मेक इट 100 Now you can see here uh, our ampere is 100. See the voltage value; it is 11.2. Previously, uh, for the regular GMAW process, our voltage we previously we have set 18 volt. Okay. Now we are going to increase the current. Prakash, you can increase the current. Make it 130. Mode, if I set 130, also the voltage value is very less here. Okay, we can see how the current is coming. You can uh, see the bead difference here. Previously, the bead is not uh, consistently smoother. You can see the bead right now; it is very smooth actually. So this is uh, CMT. Okay, now we'll go for uh, CMT pulse. Yeah, guys. Okay. So this is the source of the yeah. You can show the the source. So we uh, while doing the experiments, we also measure the voltage, current, and because this information is important, especially when you do a waveform control process like CMT, right? So the the current voltage waveforms are synergically controlled with respect to the wire theory. So when the source of the happens, voltage becomes zero. So at the instant of charge reporting, the current has to be brought down to minimum. Okay, so otherwise what happens when the current is still in the shape at higher values? What will happen? The Lorentz force that is prevailing on the droplet and liquid metal interface it will create an expulsion. So we bring the current to bare minimum, and then wire is attracted back and forth with extremely high frequency. The droplet transfer frequency in CMT will be somewhere about 100 hertz, and the droplet will per second. So therefore, 100 times in a second, the wire will go back and forth. Okay. So in that such a high frequency, the voltage voltage has to be you know detected, and then you know, what happens uh, during the charge circuit is given, current has to be brought down. So the power source will will talk to the The torch. It will measure voltage in instant, right? So that now we can achieve the 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 excellent stable transfer. That is possible only because we have the microcapacitor control power source. The power source detects the voltage instantly. Imagine 100 times in a second. It has to change the current accordingly. 
so we have inside a computer which does the which does the calculation and then accordingly control the current so that the transfer can be achieved you know, in a very stable manner then by dipping the wire okay so this cmt the next one we are going to look at we are going to mix cmt and pulse so we can also do say one dip transfer one free flight transfer so droplet can fall down from the tip of the wire so we can merge both short circuiting with pulsing right uh, and then see how the bead geometry can change okay good that is good we change the plate or okay so the one and uh, maybe yeah by the time you change the right how much it came right now 95 95 for the 95 So the time temperature data what you recorded here, we are going to use it in a global simulation, right? So how we can simulate the? I think it's, it's getting dark, right? So how we are going to simulate the heat of the zone by using this? So we record temperatures, and we want to look at you know say uh, the effect of heating and cooling rate on the phase transformation. Okay, so that we can detect using that. Yeah, no need. I can focus the wire itself. Yeah. So in this demonstration, we will also record the ice cube here. So here, because we are combining both short circuiting with pulsing, right? So we can also see how the metal transfer takes place in the deep transfer and the free flow transfer. And you can uh, you know correlate the process. Uh, so we need to have an uh, elaborate setup with the lighting so that you know when you're recording uh, ISP, uh, we'll be recording over 3000 frames per second. So that's a high speed recording required because, as I said, uh, the transfer may take place like 100 droplets per second. So if you want to look at the individual droplet, you need to record it with very high frame rate. We looked at three processes so far. So one is the um, condensed gas plot wave. The second is the pulsing transfer. Okay, so we see a pulsing waveform. Third is the um, short circuiting transfer, a dip transfer. We call that, right? So, so they are setting up the ice cube video. Is it clear, guys? Ah. So. What happens here? Uh, the voltage, what power source detects, is the same way what we are measuring using a DAC. Okay, let me take the jam board. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah. yeah so the question here is, what um, Jitu was asked, how the voltage is measured? Is it Jitu? Is it correct? Are you seeing my jam board? Okay, so imagine the arc is struck like this, isn't it? So this is our wire. Okay, so this is our base plate, and we have a contact tube here, uh, and then we have, uh, uh, yeah. So this is connected to, in this case, uh, electrode positive, and here negative. So that's the polarity we are using here, right? So. We measure actual voltage from uh, connecting one probe here. I showed you the the wire, right? And then second is over here. Yeah. The power source would also use the same sensor. So the power source will detect there is one uh, uh, lead over here, which will go to the power source. And this, the negative terminal, what we call the earthing clamp. Okay, the other circuit will go like this. So it will go to the power source, isn't it? 
So power source will detect the same way what we are measuring using a DAS, the voltage. So far we are taking the one wire out here and another one here and that goes to DAC. Yeah, Jitu, is it clear? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this power source is okay because for years they use uh, um, a microprocessor control algorithm. But then, uh, no, we have to take, say, for example, there is one data acquisition inside the power source. And for, uh, uh, for analyzing the process, suppose if you are doing research or developing, how do you get the data out? Isn't it? We can attach the, we need to attach some input, uh, uh, what is going to the DAC inside the uh, power source, and we'll take the lead out and then record, isn't it? And uh, that we'll have to open up the power source and connect to the DAC inside the uh, power source. And that is not safe when you do it, I mean, yeah. So instead of that, you know, we measure the same way the power source measure the voltage. Isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? And again, so we kept the Hall effect sensor here, isn't it? So what is the Hall effect sensor? Why do we use that? Anybody? What is the Hall effect sensor? Why do we use that? Come on, guys. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit some bridge. It's nothing but a bit some bridge. Right. So, hall effect. Okay. So, so we have uh, the inside the hall effect based on uh, no the principle of the induction, right? So any change in current would create a, a magnetic field, okay? By using an, a, a magnetostatic material, the change in magnetic field can create a voltage. So a change in current will create an, a magnetic induction, and that induction is you know, converted into a voltage. And uh, the change in current would change the magnetic field of this generator. And we detect that in terms of uh, you know on voltage, and the voltage can be converted into the change in current. So that's how we that's how we measure the current in the circuit. So by using all effect sensor and the voltage sensor, we can record the current voltage in the power. Okay, good. So any other questions? Yes. Yeah. So, in the in the pulsing transfer, there will be yeah, like you know waveform. Again, I'll go and show this thing. Okay. So I'll take one more screen. So what happens in the first exercise? We'll start from here. So in the first exercise the current is constant, okay? The second exercise in the pulsing transfer, the current is pulsed, okay? So in both the exercise, the droplet, molten droplet is detached, okay, continuously in a free flight mode. This is our base material, okay? And this is our base material. So droplets are falling, molten droplets are falling from the wire tip of the wire to the base material, isn't it? In a CMT, the current voltage waveforms are complex. Like so, we will have voltage current waveforms, something like this. Okay, so this is uh, your uh, current. And if you plot the voltage also the same, so in our king stage, it's higher voltage, and then like this. So whenever the start circuiting happens, so this is the voltage, the voltage becomes zero. Okay, and that start circuiting event, the current will be drastically reduced to aid the transfer. Okay, so the wire will be dipping onto the pole. So if you dip to the pole 
at the dipping instant the voltage becomes zero current will be reduced so in a cmt plus pulsing if you look at the fourth axis what you are going to do right current and voltage so it will be combination of the two plus three. so there will be sorry so it will be like this like that okay and then this is a one short circuiting event okay in a, in a few milliseconds and after that suppose if you are tuning the waveform such that one droplet will be in free flight in a pulsing and then you know another droplet in cmt or other way around based on this waveform the first transfer will be in the short circuiting so the wire will be dipped and then wire molten wire will be transferring at this event at this moment it will be transferred by this dipping the second it will be pulse okay so the second event when we give the current pulsing one free flight one droplet will will fall down in a free flight way and then uh, you know this process will continue so when you do one soft circuiting one pulsing the next waveform will be some cmt waveform the soft circuiting waveform Yeah, it will be like this, and then it will be like that. Continue. Yeah, I mean, is it clear? So this is a, a, a dip transfer, and this is a pulsing transfer. Dip transfer, pulsing transfer, and this can be changed. So you can have a 10 short circuiting, one pulsing, or 10 short circuiting, 10 pulsing. Okay, so the combination of that we can tune it based on the waveform we use. Yeah, is it clear? Yeah. Um, that's the mean current. So that's the mean current we use. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Guys, is ready? Yeah. Now we have recorded uh, the high-speed video of this. So what do you see here? Yeah. Sakti, you can put it. Hello. Uh, here we can see uh, the high-speed camera image of uh, the control dip for circuiting with pulsing. Uh, here, the, the, the first the electrode will dip into the weld pool and the, sort of the cycle starts. Here is the arcing phase. And uh, there is a one pulsing uh, here we can not, uh, not notice, and this is the another pulsing over here. Then it again dips into the weld pool. So here we have recorded the uh, system with a, a 6,000 frame per second, and uh, we have used ND filter, which is uh, uh, to change the exposure. Along with that, we have also used uh, with, uh, UV filters. So and uh, to get a very good contrast over here with the wire and the uh, weld pool along with the uh, uh, background so we have given a backlight that we can see over here uh, the backlight and uh, here we also maintain the focal length properly so that the lens will focus onto the weld bead section and uh, we can quite focus the uh, the wire which is getting out of the nozzle and uh, meanwhile we will record it with a proper exposure and uh, the proper ND values along with the proper filters. The filters are basically used to uh, the nullify the uh, some of the uh, like the 
lights, uh, for example. Uh, we can also uh, use a different uh, uh, bandpass filters and uh, other things so that uh, we can get a proper uh, the metal transfer video along with the uh, arcing phase. So this is the result of our uh, uh, like, uh, HPD measure. Yeah, so what do you see here? Okay, so this is our consumable wire, isn't it? So the consumable wire is actually dipped onto the pool and then dropped is transferred. So this is a pulsing case, the second. So now charge circuiting is completed, isn't it? And then there is another pulsing is even taking place and droplet is detached. So like I explained to Emil, so we have a one charge circuiting and then uh, the next transfer is free flight, the droplet is transferred. So it's a combination of dipping and then charge circuiting. And uh, the frequency of this event is extremely fast. If you look at it, you know, the, the, the transfer an average of 100 to 120 droplets. So that means that this back and forth motion of this wire, it is extremely rapid. Okay, so the, the power source should be capable of doing this uh, the reciprocating motion. And why do you need it? Because you get an excellent control over the grid geometry microstructure. And by playing around the, the transfer mode, we can also control the mechanical properties by carefully tuning the microstructure. Okay, so is it clear guys? Let me do this. Yeah, so to summarize, so this is an short circuiting and pulsing combination of both CMP plus pulse mode. And then you can see the difference in bid. Okay, so when you if you look at the milk food temperature, it will be different. CMP milk molten food will be slightly lower temperature than CMP plus pulse. Okay, the temperature gradient that is prevailing. Okay, in a, in, a, in a melting and in a solidifying molten fluid, a little bit different. So in the temperature gradient is different, so then the microstructure what is going to evolve will also be different. Okay, so we can tune the microstructure, mechanical properties, will be geometry, okay, um, by changing the mechanics of the way. Right? And the B geometry also is different. Okay, same cool because the temperature is much lower, okay, we tend to we have a narrow beam because the motor will start to So there is no fluidity, okay, because the temperature increases generally, okay, and uh, liquid can flow better in most of the you know, alloys. Not okay, so except uh, you know, in case of uh, uh, alloys where the viscosity um, decreases, produce the uh, uh, matter free well in the liquid class. So to summarize, CMP is advantageous, so when we actually, you know, want to do a dissimilar welding or materials which are difficult to weld and to minimize pattern formation. Okay. So, uh, the short circuiting transfer is wonderful. Yeah. Okay, good. Any other questions here? Yeah. yeah. Good. So, we'll move on, go back. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it can also be used for on top of the building. I don't see any issue with that. It is really possible. So CMP we use it regularly for uh, pipe building, just for building uh, of dissimilar uh, joints, steel aluminium wells, uh, and uh, no building of thin sections because uh, the arc energy can be brought down significantly. Okay, so to minimize distortion. So source of cutting transfer is used. CMT by you should be careful, right? CMT is a trademark of phone uh, The other power source manufacturer, they also have an equivalent process. Okay, so equivalent process uh, of Lincoln is known as surface tension driven. STP, surface tension transfer. Okay, so some subtle difference between uh, the Tonius waveform and the Lincoln waveform. Okay, so there's a small difference. Um, so therefore, you know, uh, they cannot, Lincoln, they cannot call us CMP. So they call it a surface tension process, STP process. Yeah. Go ahead, guys. Any other questions? If not, uh, we'll uh, summarize. 
So what we what did you see in this class? So we saw four demonstrations. One a conventional gas metal. The second is a, a pulsed gas metal. Third is CMT. Fourth is CMT with pulsing. And uh, so we also measure the, the temperature time cycle during this uh, process, and that we use it for Google uh, simulations. And we also looked at ISP video image. Okay, so what we recorded for uh, CMT plus pulsing, we showed how the dip is taking place. Okay, and how pulsing transfer is taking place. Good. Yeah. Guys, uh, so that's it we have for this session. I hope it is useful for you to learn something, look at uh, the complexities, the physics in welding. Yeah, any other questions? Yes, Emil, it's all right, everything. Okay, guys, you want to add something? Okay, so if not, uh, we lined up, we'll see you next week. So next week, we are going to look at... Uh, Legal. Next week, we are going to look at Hebrew simulation. Okay, so we, whatever we have uh, recorded, the waveform, we are going to apply onto a uh, sample, and how this waveform is going to induce the phase transformation, for example. No, we will we'll have to use a diatomical okay, to measure the phase transformation temperatures. Okay, while applying this thermal cycle and how we can simulate heat of the zone in, uh, in the control environment. Okay, good. So with this we lined up. Okay, so we'll see you next week. If you have any other questions you can ask, otherwise we can stop. Okay guys, so then we end up here. Yeah? Okay, good. See you then. Next week. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Bye.